Hi, in this video we're going to take a look at using some photographic textures. These ones I've actually pulled from the Total Textures library. Um, just got a few of these here that we're going to use in our scene. So we're going to look at using photographic textures as well as some uh, exterior lighting techniques to create a simple scene and then we'll also take the textures that we make and um, bake those down into a, a single image layer so that we can uh, bake in our lighting and get everything to come across in real time. All right, so let's start by creating our environment here. And what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to start with just a very basic uh, cube here. And let's pan out a little bit so we can get a good size here. Um, so I'm going to set this up something like this. I don't need any uh, subdivisions, so I'm just going to left click and drag down into left to get rid of those. Uh, subdivisions that I had in here. don't really need those, so we'll leave those out. I'm going to add a little bit of width to this. Well, something like that should be fine. And then I can drop that tool, and I'm going to go here and I'm going to remove the front side and the top of this. We're going to make kind of an alleyway, so we don't need to see those. And then I'll use the F key to flip around what I do have here and uh, invert it so that we have kind of end of an alleyway kind of a scene here. One thing I'm noticing is this looks like the walls are a bit low, so I think what I'll do is just pull those up a little bit, and that will give me a little bit more to work with as far as the camera angle that I can look up and down without uh, without getting to the top of this. Now I could build in something where I could see over one of these walls, but for now we're just going to create a really simple scene, and, and this will do nicely for that. All right, so. Uh, next thing we're going to do here is we're going to create a little bit of extra geometry. I'm going to start by beveling this in, and I'm going to basically create a, a sidewalk that runs around the end of the street, and then a little shift click here and bevel down so we have a curb and then you know, some street in there. Uh, once again, I don't need these ones here at the end, so I'm just going to grab those and cut them out. And since I want this to be you know, relatively even here, should I have the need to extend it, I'm going to select those scale them, turn off negative scale, and just flatten those out. So now I have kind of a, an open-ended street here. All right. So now I need to go in here and start assigning some materials. So I'm going to grab this bottom polygon and hit the M key and assign street to this one. And just so that I know I've, uh, I've put a texture on there, I'm going to give it kind of a streety color. Um, and then I'm going to shift up arrow a couple times to get the curbs there in the sidewalks, and then I'll deselect that uh, that street, and again, we'll give it a new uh, material. Sidewalk's going to be a little darker than the street, or a little lighter than the street, rather. And let's see, I think I'm going to do these two walls separately, since they're kind of different sizes. So I'll call these side walls, and I just want to give kind of a color to them for now. That'll work and this one and the wall and again just a little different color these don't really matter these are just kind of arbitrary at this point just so that I can see them broken down relatively quickly alright now with uh, we're start here with the ground and just move our way up it's just gonna be a simple way to do this so I'm gonna go to my shader tree open up render and find my street here and you can do this here in the 3D view, but uh, or in the modeling view. But sometimes I find it's a lot easier to work in the render view, so you can actually get a real-time preview as to you know what your textures are going to look like. So let's just turn this around, and I'm also going to rotate my light. I'm going to adjust the lighting later here, but I do want to kind of rotate this around so I can see a little bit more of our street. And if you know me, you know I hate sharp uh, sharp sharp shadows so I'm going to just add a little bit of a spread angle of that just to preserve my sanity. Oh, that's probably a bit much. Let's go down to something like that. Okay, that'll do. Again, we're going to adjust the lighting later. This is just so that we have something in there to see while we work. Okay, so I've got my street material here and I'm going to go back over to where my uh, textures are and I'm going to be using, for the street, I'm going to use this kind of ground cobblestone uh, kind of thing here. So I'm going to grab all of the associated textures. That's ground 12. So I'm going to grab everything with the ground 12 and just drop it in above my material. Okay, now just for the sake of getting everything to render uh, in real time nicely, I'm going to take my 
diffuse color and drag it all the way up to the top. And now I'm going to edit the, the placement on all these. And I want to edit them at the same time so that I don't have to go and copy and paste in any of my things or you know, do anything like that. Um, so I can edit these all at the same time. Right now they're set to a to a, uh, a UV map. And the only UV map that we have in the scene is this kind of basic one here just from the creation of the cube. And it's not going to be what we want at all. So what I'm going to do for this one, uh, since this is a simple um, simple shape, it's just a flat polygon, I'm going to change this to planar on the Y. And now all I have to do is set a size here. These look pretty small. I think I'm going to scale those up to three meters. I'll see what that looks like. Eh, let's go up just a little bit more. Let's say four meters. Eh, take it back. I like three meters. So let's put it at three meters. And now we need to assign these all to the right place. Um, without any letter designation in the back, that's the diffuse color. And then each of these is going to go to a corresponding one. So S is going to be my specular amount. So let's take that down to specular amount. Um, N is going to be my normal map. So we'll apply that to normal. Um, M is going to be a mask. We're actually not going to use the mask at the moment. Uh, what these masks are that they include is so that you can add an overlay to kind of break up the uh, the material a little bit and keep the tile a little bit uh, more unrecognizable. Um, we're not going to use it right at the moment here. We could use that if we want to, but uh, there it is. We'll just hide it for now. And then B is our bump map, so we'll put that on bump. So now if I go down here, you can... Uh, you can get a little bit of an idea of what it's going to be doing as far as depth. Now I may want to adjust how deep my bump is here, and I can do that with the bump strength on the surface. Um, so if I drag this up, you know, the higher it gets, the more heavy that bump is going to look here. It's probably a bit high. I think I'm going to go a little higher than the default, though. I'm going to go to about 200%. Alternately, another way that you can control that is by going into the bump image itself, and you can set the high and low values. So you can set you know, the low lower or the high higher, or both, and that will increase the, the depth the depth of your bump map. So I think that works for there. Um, now I'm going to do the uh, the sidewalk here. And so um, there are a couple different ways that we can go about doing this sidewalk. Um, we could uh, put a UV map on it. And depending on how we're going to lay this out, that may or may not be the best way to go. I'm thinking in this case, it's probably not going to be the best. Uh, I've got a relatively small surface here for it. Uh, if I can find it, I'm going to use this stone material. So it's got you know, kind of tight weave. I know this looks like more of a wall, but we're going to use it for the for the ground in this case. Um, so let's just grab that and drop it in here. So let's open up Sidewalk. And again, this is under the miscellaneous one. So I'll grab all those. Um, and I can use the mask again in this one. So I'll deselect that, drag it up into my Sidewalk. And again, it's going to come in kind of funny. It's going to try and render the top layer. So I'll put my diffuse color up to the top. And now I'm going to select all of these. And again, I want to edit these all together. Now these have some depth to them in 3D. There's actually a step down here. So if I use a, a planar projection map, um, it's, it's going to stretch down the side, which is actually what this UV is doing. Since when I beveled this, you can see that the UV didn't get any of that edge beveled. So this entire set of polys, those three polygons, is taking up the exact same UV space, which is why they just get stretched down like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a cubic map on these. So let's go to cubic. That's starting to look a little bit better. Let's tilt this down a little. Zoom in a little bit so we can see the uh, sidewalk a little bit more. And I'd say that's probably not bad. Yeah, I, I, well, I can start to see the tile on that. So let me increase the size just a little bit here. So um, again, let's select all these. Go to our texture locator. I'm going to put this up to two mil or two meters. We'll see how that looks. Ah, that's a little better. Still has that grain. It's still pretty fine, but um, we're losing some of that repetition. So that's nice. All right. So once again, I've got to apply the uh, the materials to their corresponding. Uh, channels here. So S goes to specular, N goes to normal, B goes to bump. Okay. And with this one, I don't want that bump to be too much, so I'm just going to leave it as is. I may end up actually turning it down a little bit. 
Now one thing to note, I could go here and use a little edge bevel on you know, the corners of the curves and whatnot. Um, and actually, I think I will do it just here on the corner of the curve, but that's that's about all I'm going to do as far as adding any extra detail here for now. And this is just, I'm going to do it really subtly, just so that it doesn't seem too awkward. Another thing that I could do would also be to go in here, add some loop slices, and get a few little beveled edges um, that I pull down a little to give, you know, the idea of seams in a sidewalk. I'm thinking, you know, we're just looking at basically how to set these textures up and then how to do some lighting. So we'll call it a deal for now. Okay, so let's move on to the walls. Let's uh, got this wall looking at us, so let's do that end wall first. And for the end wall, I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do these bricks here. I got two sets of bricks, and I think I'm just going to use this first one. Um, so I'm going to use brick 20 here. Again, let's select all those, leave the mask out because I'm not going to use it. And we'll drop those into end wall. Okay. And uh, make sure you save your files often and save iterations of them. So um, I'm going to put these in the same folder with my textures because that's I'm going to have this whole project. So so I'll call this texture practice. And I'll call it texture practice one. So I can save iterations. So it'll be texture practice two, three, etc. That will keep me from saving over something that I really liked and putting something that I don't in its place. So now let's select all these and just like we did with the other ones we're going to um, assign a new mapping. We're going to do planar again and we're going to go down the... it looks like it is the Z just our... oh yeah our tiling is set very very small for this so um, let's go in here. Let's so first let's just auto size this and see what happens. I think that's actually not bad <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, one thing I'm noticing is it looks like it's a little bit squashed, so I'm going to take the uh, the Y and just kind of, whoops, sorry, not the Y, the X, and pull that out just a little bit, kind of stretch that out. Yeah, I like that, that's working. So once again, I've got to apply my um, my layers to the right channels. So, and normal. B is to bump. Okay. All right, so that one's pretty much ready. Now on the side walls here, I'm going to put a concrete uh, texture that I've got here. Um, there it is, the stone here. So I'm going to apply this one. So let's get all of this without our mask. Um, and then side walls I've already got open there, so let's just drop this in. And again, we're going to go about the same thing here. I'm going to put my bottom texture up to the top so I can see what this is looking like. This time I want to zoom out a bit so I can see the whole area. Now I'm going to select all of these, change them to a planar map. Uh, this time we want to go down the X. And again, I think auto size is probably going to get us pretty close. Oh, that's wanting to tile a whole lot. Which is kind of weird. That should uh, match itself up to the size of our wall there. And for some reason, we're getting a lot of tiling going on. Oh, there we go. That's why it looks like I didn't have everything selected. So, again, we're on planar. Let's choose auto size. And for some reason, this is not wanting to auto size here. Let's get all these individually then. If I'm using auto size, I know that they're going to go to the same scale. So. Let's turn that on. I think that's, uh, you know, that's okay here for what we're doing. This is, again, relatively simple. Um, so now we have all of these set up, and we would just need to make a few modifications to our um, to our UV maps to get something um, appropriate here uh, that we could that we could bake in the texture. But we'll worry about that after we uh, have created our our entire scene here. Okay, so we'll stop for now. We'll come back in the next one, uh, and we'll start looking at the lighting in this scene. See you in the next video.